Friends, isn't that just the neatest thing? The, um, look at those gifs, right? Too bad I couldn't have gotten that on the, uh, on the whiteboard. That would have been so neat. I found those and I said, oh, how, I hope they work. So here we are. Wow, we made it. We are here. Congratulations, grads. Um, final module on the SurfSafe um, boot camp. So here's a couple of things are new. Um, there was still some room for, for new stuff. I'm going to show you those photos that I promised you. So, um, so let's go. This is for you. Congratulations, grad. Graduation day. Please do let me know how you did on your surf safe. Shoot me an email. I'd love to know. Pass or fail. I mean, you know, just let me know. I'd love to know where I can improve also. It's always, there's always room for improvement, isn't there? All right. Whoops, it is. Oh, I gave away most of it. So quick review. So we're talking about hand washing. One of the things that you see there is the signage. Remembering that it's 100 degrees, um, 10 seconds scrubbing with soap, 20 seconds total, and uh, single use paper towel. The signage is obviously there. Remembering on the sink that right here we have uh, an air gap, right? So this is a review. Whoops, oh my gosh, I think my clicker is done. Um, so here's something the six hour cooling I, I wanted to share with you. So basically, six hour cooling, I believe, is new for you. Right, so what we have is that the first two hours, you're gonna go from hot to 70 degrees, right? Um, and there's four ways, five ways. Is it five or six ways? It's on the next slide. There are several ways to go from hot to 70 degrees within two hours. And then the final four hours from 70 to 41 or less, that is our friend, the refrigerator. All right, so here, I mean, let me count them with you. One, two, three, four, five ways. Okay, so um, I highlighted chill stick because that's what this is. So I wanted you to know that that's what that is. So the first two hours, we can do a combination of methods. I can do an ice bath and a chill stick to help beat it. A uh, blast chiller, by the way, is like a microwave in reverse. They're pretty pricey depending on your budget. So if you have a substantial um, tax refund coming in for next April and you got $7,000 that you don't know what to do with, Toss it into a blast chiller. You'd be the, the envy of the neighborhood. You could break some, uh, Porsche, um, food groups into smaller portions, right? Or you can use shallow pans. So here's the ice paddle or the chill stick right there. That's pretty much the size of it. Here's what an ice bath is. So it's basically one container inside of another container filled with ice. Obviously, uh, the shallow pan is self-explanatory. You're looking for a two-inch height or less. And then what I have here is a, a sample of what cooling times take, take right? So um, if I leave it alone on a 12 inch by four inch, which is double the two inch um, depth that they showed on the previous slide, we're talking about four hours. That's not really a shallow pen. So you're looking for a two, uh, two inch height, not four, right? Eight inches by 12 inches, you're looking for 16 hours little more than half a day and then 12 by 12 you're looking at a total cooling time of approximately 36 hours it's close to a day and a half um, okay safe thawing methods we talked about it so it's freezer to refrigerator freezer to under cold running water the operative word is running water you just want to open the cold valve right freezer to microwave or freezer to the cooking process this looks a whole lot better than my drawing doesn't it I love it, love it, love it, and my mouse is not working. Okay, the three compartment sink. So we have wash, rinse, sanitize, and a, a reminder is that the first sink is 110, assuming we're not using chemicals. The last one, the sanitize is 171. And again, what if, if you come across a question that asks you which is the third sink of a three compartment sink, sanitize is the right answer. I do that to trick my kids all the time. But if I ask which is the third step of a five-step dishwashing process, now we're talking rinse. Right, so we're remembering that. Scrape, wash, rinse, sanitize, air drying, putting things upside down to prevent cross contamination. All right. Um, so whoops. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to stop using my, my clicker. It's going too fast. So wash, rinse, sanitize, air dry, but here they have stuff air drying. They have a bucket that looks like it might have been for chemicals. 
I don't know what's going on there. This is not the restaurant that I was telling you about. This is another place. So this is, wait till you see the other place. Uh, hand washing signage. The NSF logo. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on it for there. Uh, it's kind of showing up. So if you see it right there, you see that it's NSF and it's a little, it's the three letters with a black circle and white lettering. That's basically what it looks like. Um, all right, so now we're at the restaurant. This is the restaurant. So here what I, what I found, so I got there at around 7.30 or 8 in the morning. It's about 99 degrees on a hot Florida summer. So it's already, it's already 100 and some odd degrees in the kitchen. But they had put the chicken under the sink of the, of the wash sink, of the three compartment sink. And again, I wasn't there to make corrections. I was there to take notes. I was simply there as an observant. Okay, so I'm gonna show you these slides and then, because we, we've been through a lot of this already. Um, I found this, this interesting too. So there's beef um, sitting on top of a milk crate and then I regrettably, I didn't take a great picture, but that is a utility sink, AKA service sink, AKA mop sink, right? So it can have any one of those three names. So. Obviously, if you, we go to dump, dump, dump any mop water in there, we're already putting the, um, the, the, the beef at risk. But don't worry, because I did find the, mops, the, the, the mop bucket later. Show it to you in a second. So here we have a cleaning brush that's rusting quietly inside of a box full of plantains. No, no, no. Right? It gets worse, don't worry. Um, so here's a box, uh, a container of beans. It is, a, it, it is an approved container, NSF. It's, um, it's durable, non-absorbent, easy to clean, tight-fitting lid. Problem with this lid, there's actually two problems. One, it doesn't have a label. Two, there's a crack in the lid, which means we can end up with cross-contamination. We can end up with humidity inside. Remember, the AW scale is 0.0 to 1.0. So just a little bit of moisture is moisture. Right? Now this door leads to the, to, the, to the rear of the restaurant. We see that opening there, that's not a good sign, right? Because pests have an easier way to get in. There's also a milk crate back there, so be mindful of that. We're gonna talk more about that in a moment. At the bottom of the door, you have yet, oh, uh, there's the mop bucket. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop using this. At the bottom of the door, there is another gap. Not good, because again, rodents, um, um, Pests can get into the restaurant, right? Uh, here we go. Everybody's responsible for a lot of things, right? Even though it's not your job. Paper towel was out, soap was out. So even though it's not your job, take care of it. Or I, and then what I recommend is leave the roll of toilet paper nearby so that somebody can quickly grab it and, and slap it into place and replace it. Same with the soap, right? So here, this is where I found the mop bucket. Um, in the bathroom in the back next to the toilet. Problem with this is that you've got cross-contamination from the toilet to the mop bucket, not from the mop, bit, from the mop bucket to the toilet, right? Because you've got fecal matter that can potentially cross-contaminate the mop. Then we've got the hose inside, not a big deal, but remember the hose, if you leave it connected to a faucet and leave the hose unattended in the bucket, you could end up with what? Do you remember? Cross-connection. Cross connection because if there's a, a drop in pressure in the establishment, rather than water going out, it's going to start going and sucking water in. So that's why you also want to have a vacuum breaker on the faucets so that should the, the flow go backwards, it shuts that little door and that breaks the vacuum, right? Hence vacuum breaker. All right. Um, okay, so this was interesting. I thought, why is she washing? Dishes with their gloves, but well, hey, you know what, to each his own. Not the worst thing I've seen. But here was the worst thing I've seen. So she turns around and starts working on the chicken that's behind her. I mean, not the chicken, the um, uh, corn. I said, okay, well, it's still not that bad, right? But it did get worse. So then she turns around and starts washing poultry with the same gloves that she was washing the dishes, with the same gloves that she was taking care of the corn, and the poultry is in which, which compartment sink? The third compartment sink, which is the what? Yes, the sanitized sink. The cleanest sink of all is where she's washing the poultry. All right, so it, it, it got progressively worse. Great thing that she's still wearing those gloves, isn't it? 
Perfect. <laughs> yeah, okay. This little table caught my eye. So the owner says to me, oh, I don't know what, I don't know, that table comes up on the report. Now the report is, at least at that time, was monolingual English. He's monolingual Spanish. So I didn't have to look at the report right away. I said, well, I know what we need to do with that table. We need to throw it out. That table needs to be non-porous, easy to clean, NSF certified. It needs to be safe for the, uh, for the restaurant, for our food prep area. Wood is absorbent, it's not easy to clean, and, and it's just a bacterial playground. Then I, I noticed across the way something else that needed to get thrown out, and that was this. Oh, not that. We'll get to it later, huh? <laughs> I'll show it to you in a moment. Now here, the thing here is um, the milk. So they were using the milk to create a batter, but they were multitasking, but the milk stayed out, and the milk stayed out and the milk stayed out and it was still there. It was there for a very long time. By now the kitchen is probably 107, 110 degrees. Again, hardworking ladies, they just didn't know food safety. Right, plus you've got all this cross-contamination going on around there. Very dirty little environment, right? Um, and then there's the, the, the mixture that they were making with the milk. So the milk was on one side, this was on the other, nobody was using it anymore because they switch tasks. When you switch tasks, put everything away, put a cover on this, throw this in the sink. Uh, I don't know if you want to throw it in the sink, right, with the, with the raw poultry at this point. It's probably safer there. Um, so you want to start taking care of your, you see how one, it's a domino effect, isn't it? Right? So, um, so that, that needed to go in the fridge with a cover until you get around to uh, working on it again. Oh, there's, there's the other wooden item. It was a wooden bench, same thing, throw it out. But the box did catch my eye. I walked up to the box, I touched it, it was cold to the touch. I said, what is this? Like, what is in that mystery box? And there it is, queso ahumado, which means smoked cheese. So they buy a ginormous block of cheese, they freeze it, and then they put it, they sell it in, in like little individual bags, which is okay, but they leave that box of cheese on top of that bench all day while it melts down. Yuck! Yes, indeed. So, um, again, thawing, that would be thawed out where? In the refrigerator. And it would still be an overnight process. But that's fine and it would be safe. 41 degrees or less is where you want to have, have that in the refrigerator. Okay, so there's our smoked cheese. Uh, this light fixture, very low hanging. I'm, Pretty tall, I'm, I'm at 5'11", so had I been able to whack it, I could whack the glass that covers the bulb, and then whack the bulb, get a good shot. So that bulb needs a metal housing, or a GC, a general contractor, to make a hole in the ceiling and have the light recessed, and forever be out of the way, right? What's going on here? I put it there, the missing label. Ooh, what's inside? We don't know. Only the container and the food product really know what's going on. Same thing with the bag. So you've got to have labels on everything. Even if it looks like sugar, sugar, salt, salt. Put labels on everything. The tight fitting lid, thank God, that was working out. Um, oh, right. Awesome. So here we go. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on her. So you see what she's got on that hand? First of all, she's wearing Crocs, which is not a good idea. Right? Drop a knife. Guess what happens to one or more of your toes? The other thing is over here, she's wearing gloves. Oh, and then over here, remember that, that brush, that cleaning brush? There's a box of plantains there. Um, and then the, uh, the apron. The apron is a garbage bag, right? So a lot of ideas of what food safety looked like, they just didn't know the exact details of food safety. She had the cleanest hands in Miami when I saw her that day, okay? So, um, so anyway, I was there for just observational. That was it. Um, taking photos so that they would learn from themselves. Okay, so now we're outside. Remember that milk crate I talked to you about? There's the, the door and how it's got a, a big old gap. And then here, so they use this old shopping cart because the garbage containers are all the way at the end of the plaza, right? So the other thing that kept coming up on their uh, inspection report was that they needed enclosed garbage cans outside. So we did that. We installed two garbage containers 
in clothes with a lid. They kept the shopping cart so that these ladies could then throw the garbage bag into there and, and um, walk the garbage to the end of the plaza. All right, now here's a great question. If I were to ask you, when do you wash your hands, before throwing out the trash or between throwing out the trash and putting on a new liner? Right, so what I'm saying is, is do I want to have clean hands when I put a new bag in the garbage can? No, it's still the same dirty task, right? So wash your hands once the whole task is done because it's all part of the same dirty task. All right, just throwing that in there as a informational. This little container ah, caught my eye. Let me see if I can zoom in on it too. Um, where the handle is, no, it doesn't really work, but it's got a little drop it here. Um, whoa, what did I do? So right there, it's got like a little drippy and over here it's got stuff also. So they used to use, they used to, they still do. They use, they use that to uh, rinse out um, chicken when it's broken up into smaller pieces. But the thing is that they were only cleaning that. They weren't sanitizing it. It wasn't being washed, rinsed, or sanitized. So they were just rinsing it off and little pieces of chicken were staying on there. And then they would neatly hang it over the lemon. So it would drip, it would cross-contaminate these lemon juice bottles, so now you've got cross-contamination. We're going to talk about the three different types of cross-contamination that exist. We've talked about it before. Here we've got beef. So the beef is set out. What is off to the side that doesn't show is onion that was going to, um, onion that was going to be used as a garnish, right? Not being part of the cook process. So as a garnish, now it's, a, it's a basically ready to eat. So it's potentially going to be contaminated with E. coli. And then you've got cutting boards that were all over the place. They're, they're sitting on one here. There was another one back here. It was a royal mess. By the way, this is their sanitizer bucket. So again, they had some semblance of, how, of what they needed to be done, but it was just like crazy going on in there. All right. Uh, oh, the cell phone, the almighty cell phone, right? Don't take it into your kitchen area. Your, your hands are dirty, the phone is dirty, one is cross-contaminating the other. It's just a royal pigsty of bacteria, pathogens. It's just a mi microbial fest, right? So no, no cell phone in the back. They got points on that too. I checked the report. Um, what else do we have? Okay, so internal cooking temperatures. This is great if you want to pause it and write them down and commit these to memory. This is the most basic... Um, uh, cooking ter internal temperatures that you're going to get. Fruits, vegetables, and RTE foods, 135. Eggs, fish, pork, beef, lamb, 145. Ground meats, fish, or, or poultry, I mean ground meats or fish, 155. Poultry stuffing, stuffed meats, uh, reheated PHF. So PHF is an old term. It was uh, potentially hazardous food. Now it's TCS, temperature control for safety. But it's all of these foods down here are 165. So anything you throw in the microwave, 165. All right, so pause it, jot it down, and keep it for yourself. Um, receiving temperatures, um, whole legs, live shellfish. You know what I'm missing here at the 45 degree or lower? Do you remember? Pasteurized milk. So these are receiving temperatures. Everything else is 41 degrees or less. Wonderful. All right, calibrating a thermometer with a much better illustration than my, my handy-dandy drawing. 32 degrees Fahrenheit, plus or minus 2 degrees. That's your, the, the variance is plus or minus 2 degrees. And you hold it by the dial, or if you have that little thingy, you can hold it by there too. So it's the uh, crushed ice method. Storage, 6 inches off the floor. Before it was called FIFO, which is first in, first out, it used to be called LDR which was label, date, and rotate. Now they call it FIFO. So um, four inches off the countertop, they have a counter right here. Um, original containers, if, if you don't have, like here there's no, it doesn't have a label. Actually here there's a lot going on, right? You've got chemicals commingled with food, specifically ready to eat food. You've got ladles, they're, they're sitting on sanitizer containers. It's a mess, right? This is not from their restaurant, by the way. Oh, over here, can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, that's not too bad. Over here, you've got coving. So coving is that little um, edgy um, tile at the bottom where the wall meets the floor. Remember I drew that for you some time ago? 
So that's the last tile where the wall and the floor meet. And its purpose is for to make floors easier to clean. So water, dirt, grease, all that muck doesn't accumulate on the edges. All right. Uh, okay, perfect. So the big food allergens, we talked about all eight of them. Um, again, group them so that you remember how they go together. But look at this. All staff must know the, com the most common food allergens. And then the other thing is that you want to encourage your staff, they must be trained to ask guests about any food allergies. Um, I had a menu here. Oh, it's still here. So on this menu, and I know it's tiny print, but at the back, on the bottom, it said, please let the chef know of any food allergies. So this is their, um, their to-go menu. Okay? Perfect. Um, food prep staff must also be trained in preventing allergen cross-contamination. Meaning if I know I have a guest with a severe peanut allergy, ask a manager to deliver that dish or wash your hands thoroughly and then deliver that dish all by itself. And let the kitchen know that you've got somebody with severe allergies. Food contamination prevention, we've talked about all of this. If you need to pause it and sit on it, but again, so this is review. Um, more cross-contamination. So remember I said just a few minutes ago the types of cross-contamination. Environment to food, food to food, human to food. So that was all that stuff that you saw in those pictures from that restaurant in Miami. All right. Um, so the microorganisms that are most harmful to you are the ones you can't smell, taste, or see. Right. Botulism was an, an example I had given to you. Uh, types of pathogenic microorganisms. We talked about this also. Bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. Fat Tom, we talked about all of this. It's also in your e-study guide, right? Um, all, that, all that is there. So just go over it one more time, two more times. Watch the videos again, all right? Ooh, vomiting. So you also got to let your staff know about vomiting and diarrhea because if they have it, you want to know about it. And you know it's a bad day when you've got both. Right? When you've got vomiting and diarrhea, and we've all been there, right? Uh, I have a stomach bug. Probably not. You probably got foodborne illness. All right? So you know it's a bad day. But you want your employees to let you know, I'm having a bad day. And if they were actively working with food while having a bad day, you're going to have to throw that food out that they were working on because it could have been aerosolized, even with the mask. Because a lot of stuff is going through those masks, folks. Okay, and then the other thing is a lot of folks are just wearing the same mask over and over and over and over again. Nobody's disposing of their mask. We're not going through a mask five times a day. I showed you a couple of ways to remember. First of all, the, the common symptoms are vomiting and diarrhea. Send sick employees home now, and we've got those illnesses, Salmonella, Shigella, E. coli, um, hepatitis A, and norovirus. Remember, hepatitis C is a problem with the liver. The other way that I showed you was with the gas station. If you remember seeing any of those around the neighborhoods. Um, so that helped me help you. So years ago when I was driving, I said, oh my gosh, look at that. I can throw that into my trainings. Um, so there it is again. And then what I did was I added the letter N to help make it a little more memorable. And then you've got Hess N. All right. And then there they are again. Beautiful. All right. So consumer advisory is when you let your customers know through either the, the consumer advisory, um, not only about allergens, because we're talking about that also, but what we're talking about here is undercooked items. These items may be served undercooked, consuming raw or undercooked items, and then they gave you meat, poultry, seafood, shellfish, eggs, may increase your risk of foodborne illness. This menu actually includes the word death in it. All right, the other consumer advisory was this one. This is at a very local, uh, um, a, a local chain here. Actually, it's not local anymore. It's like all over Florida. But this is at their front door. Um, I saw this. They had it on the front door at West Palm Beach and Palm Beach Gardens where they had a higher senior citizen population. All right. We talked about restricted from work, the symptoms. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You know what? This doesn't belong here. <sighs> Delete that. Restricted. This is exclusionary. This one's very bad. This one's hepatitis A. Restricted is this. This is not there. I apologize. It got away from me. All right. But you learned something, right? 
Uh, hand washing, more of that. You know that, like the back of your hand, pun intended. And then the hand washing technique displayed on a pictorial. Uh, again, more of what you need. Hand sanitizer is a supplement. It's a backup. All right, if you don't have hand sanitizer, that's okay. Hand washing is king. Your trash can, hot and cold running water, single-use towels, and your handy-dandy signage. All right, so cleaning and sanitizing, we talked about that. We, we clean the floor, we don't sanitize the floor, right? Uh, cleaning and sanitizing, we're talking about the three compartment sink, sanitizer, cloth, and bucket. You saw in the picture that they had a bucket. They had the right intentions, but they were misplaced, okay? Um, proper sanitizing solution strength. Remember, you're using a concentration kit or a test kit to check the PPMs, the parts per million. Awesome. All right, uh, so the IPM, we talked about that. I believe it was on module number 10, I think it was. Um, IPM, Integrated Pest Management. What are pests looking for? Food, shelter, and water. They're not going to leave. They're living in a condominium at your restaurant, right? So cleaning and removal of food, sanitizing, eliminating germs. So here's a cockroach. We don't like those. Uh, that is a German roach. Uh, if you're not familiar with a German roach, they are pretty small and they duplicate quickly. It's like a thousand eggs at a time, some stupid number like that. And then we also have um, rats, right? So keep doors closed. Oh, it got me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, look for signs of pests. So droppings, streak marks along the corner. Those are signs of pests. Check deliveries carefully. If you see gnaw marks on a box, open that box. All right, it could be working as, um, oh my God. Um, oh, I forgot it. It's in history and I won't remember it. Ah. Anyway, perform cleaning duties. Th Trojan horse. Yeah, I got it. Trojan horse. So if you see a box that's been gnawed at, it could be a Trojan horse. You could have some, um, some, some passengers inside, right? And oh my goodness, I did it. Woo! Actually, you did it. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations on your boot camp training. I hope you like each and every one of the modules. Please. Let me know how you did. I would love to know. Hey, I took the class. I took the test. Passed it. Aced it. Failed it. You were terrible. You were great. Here's what I recommend. Whatever. I'm receptive. I'm always learning. All right, guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, be blessed. Congratulations. Thanks for sticking around and keep in touch. Bye-bye.